Hello and welcome to Mr. Kenyon's studio. I'm in my classroom here. I'm an elementary school music teacher. And there's all kinds of cool instruments I have, so I decided to make uh, a video on classroom instruments. Um, it's going to be actually broken up into two parts. The first part, this video is going to be on pitched instruments only. Um, and then in the future I'm going to do another video on the unpitched percussion instruments. So in this video we're going to cover uh, these instruments behind me, these are called orps. We're going to cover the boom whackers, the ukulele, and the recorder. So let's get started. So these bad boys are called ORF instruments, or just ORFs. Now there's different types of ORF instruments. What is ORF? ORF is actually a methodology for elementary music. Um, it was created by a, a man named Carl ORF. And it uses these, these instruments were designed specifically for that methodology. Um, but as you can see, they are other they are instruments that are real instruments but they're a little different okay xylophones and metallophones those are regular instruments you would have in an orchestra well metallophone is kind of a generic term there's different types of metallophones <clears throat> but uh, xylophone normally when you think of xylophone if you have kids you're probably thinking of this guy right here this is actually a glockenspiel. What's the difference between a glockenspiel and a xylophone? Glockenspiels have metal bars. Xylophones have wooden bars. Okay, so they're different pitch ranges. The smaller ones are uh, higher pitch. Larger ones are the bass ones. Those have lower pitch. <clears throat> now I'm fil filming with one hand. You're actually supposed to um, use one hand to mute the mallet. Uh, not the mallet, the, the bar when you hit it. So, I'm going to try to do this. So you play that, and then you mute it you with your other hand. That way it's not all ringing up. What's different about these ORF instruments and regular xylophones or glockenspiels or marimbas or different types of these... Uh, um, the per keyboard instruments that you play with some mallets is that um, these have interchangeable bars. So if you can see, I can actually take these bars out and replace them with different pitches. So in a way you can kind of cheat. <laughs> Perfect for elementary kids. Because if you have a song that uses, say, a pentatonic scale, which is only five notes, you can just take out the keys you don't need. So you would take out F and B if you wanted to do a C pentatonic scale. Of course, that's like cheating, but you can always do it. And then you can also put accidentals in there, meaning flats or sharps. But then you would have to replace a natural note. So 
you could only have B or B flat. You couldn't have both. So these are not chromatic instruments. <coughs> but again, they're designed for elementary classroom use. And then these here, these big ones, are the bass bars. They're, these are pretty cool. I'm missing an E here. I only got C, D, F, G, and A. So that's it for the ORF. Actually, other percussion instruments are used in ORF as well, but these are specifically designed for ORF, so these are referred to as ORFs. So these are boom whackers. Each child would have one different instrument, and they're pitched, so you can play a whole scale with them. I only have a diatonic set here, but there's actually chromatic sets. Typically, you're going to be playing it like that by hitting your hand. You can also hit it on the ground. And then you can also play them with mallets, too. So those are a lot of fun. So we covered all the pitched percussion instruments. But there are some other pitched instruments that are typically used in elementary classrooms. I actually live in Hawaii, so this guy right here is very common, but it's also very common in schools all over the world. This is an ukulele. It's sort of like a mini guitar in a way. It's got four strings. And the bottom four strings of the guitar are tuned relative to each other, the same as the ukulele. So, they're uh, fourths and one third. This right here is a third. These are fourths. Except the ukulele um, has a high G string. A typical uh, ukulele tuning is you're going to have this is more like a fifth five string banjo, fifth string. It's like a utility string for a finger picking style, like banjo style. Um, <clears throat> other ukuleles use low G strings. You can opt to put that on your ukulele to use that string melodically, but usually you would just only use the bottom three strings for scale playing. But usually when you're teaching in an elementary classroom, you're only going to be playing chords anyway. Okay, so that's the ukulele. Every elementary teacher should know a little ukulele. And of course this, the recorder. And I didn't mention this on the ukulele, but like many instruments, there's a different sizes, right? This is a soprano. There's also concert size, tenor, baritone, even bass. Same, same goes with the recorder, but you don't really need all those. For the classroom, you just need the soprano recorder. And the thing about the recorder that um, may be confusing to a lot of people who are new to the recorder is there's what they call the Baroque style recorder and the German style. You want to get the Baroque recorders. The Bar Baroque style recorders are the traditional ones and they're way more in tune. <laughs> the German ones sound terrible. Uh, just, just trust me, don't go with <laughs> Baroque. The Ger German ones are designed for more simple fingering because some of the fingering on here, you have to do what they call cross fingering. Like this is an F here. It's kind of complicated, right? You have this middle finger lifted up and everything else held down. Whereas on the German fingering, it's only this. It's just one finger. So it's just like a, a scale is just like one finger at a time, which makes more sense. But it's the instrument is not originally designed for that. So it's better to teach them... Uh, on the Baroque instrument because it will sound way better. Um, it's going to be harder, but it will sound way better. And a, like a C major scale on here is not going to be easy. For elementary age kids, it, depending on what grade they're learning, um, for me in my school I teach uh, third grade the recorder. And uh, basically by the end of the year they can play a C major scale, but some of them can't even really do it very well. So.
Yeah, so typically you're just going to start with B, A, and G. Most recorder method books will start you out with that. But anyway, this is the soprano recorder. And get the Baroque one for a class, for an elementary classroom. So that's it for today's episode. I hope that you enjoyed it and found it informative. Uh, in the next episode, um, I'm going to be covering unpitched percussion instruments, which is all those different unusual instruments. You may wonder, what in the world is this thing called? I'm going to show you about those. And uh, so I hope that you enjoyed this. And if you liked the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content. Thank you for watching.